perceptions about our community. Are there any questions from the audience? One minute. And the response, one minute. I could probably make myself heard, but um, Ms. Ms. Jones, is, is one of the difficult discussions voting rights in the Republican Party? <laughs> um, to answer your question, um, obviously um, there has been a lot of talks about you know voting rights and all that. Yes, that is a discussion that we are having. Um, but most importantly, it's making sure that we educate the community on um, issues surrounding voting rights, surrounding voter equality, and things of that nature. I do think that there is um, some incorrect information that is being disseminated on both sides as it relates to voting rights, you know, and I think it's important that we, we give the truth, we provide truth. So making sure that, I would say in the past, um, one of the issues that I've always pushed back on, with, whether it be voting rights, whether it be racism, or any of the hard topics, is um, that we have to face it as a party. We can't hide from it, we can't say that we're just not taking part in this discussion and we're not going to be represented when it comes to these topics. So yes, that is a topic that we are discussing and making sure that not only do we look at how people are feeling, what the, the consensus is, but what role do we play in making sure that we provide comfort when it comes to that topic. That's okay. Thank you. Any questions?
area voters counted and new election machines, and there's a big focus towards that happening. Privilege. 
We're not able, number one, to go out and find apartments. Uh, we're not able to go out and put a down payment on a new car. Uh, we're not able to take a risk and go move to a new city and not worry about what happens. So what you've seen is a lot of millennials downsize. They've put their furniture in storage units. They're living with their parents for five or six years. Uh, they're either staying in school because you can defer your loans if you just go to grad school <laughs> and get another plus loan that you can defer another 10 to 15 years until you get the job by virtue of the law that President Obama passed that allows you to pay the interest based on your current salary. So what you're seeing is an attack is my, probably the best word at the system that does not work for those who need to work the most. And so you have millennials, you have millennials basically being creative. They're basically saying, we're going to take a stab at this whatever way we possibly can. And it makes the privilege uncomfortable because there's this idea that I have to give up what I have. No, you have to give up your status as privilege. Well, when you talk about the Francine stuff, when you have members of Congress that are using the word socialism that on the Democratic side, who are saying the word I am a socialist, or, or, and actually saying that that, to me, it's not branding when we're just repeating what's already been stated. However, what I will say, and this is interesting, when you said you graduated in 2016, I was like, I don't think I'm going to look at it anymore. <laughs> um, but, but no, so it's, the issue that, that I had, I would say, on my side, when it comes to the current policy that we presented, is I don't feel that there's a level of transparency that's taking, that needs to take place, or that is taking place. What I feel as though is that we are we are blocking out or writing a broad stroke of as to what we think needs to be done, and like you said, taking a stab at it. I don't think it's as well thought out as it needs to be. Um, prime example: I when I was in Israel, I um, met with um, leaders that were part of the medical community. Um, and they have universal health care in Israel. What is not talked about is the, no, the high number, of, the high tax rate that takes place that, that hits the community on a regular basis in order to have universal health care. Or that the, the doctors have agreed to a salary of 160000 a year. So there's no billing or private billing to take place where you can make any more than that. Or the fact that if you want to be seen um, uh, as, as a, let's say you want, you want to actually set up an appointment and be seen regularly, you do have to pay a fee that, that, that is being taken out of your paycheck every month. So there is a lot of details that go into providing a lot of these policies that are being pushed that I feel as though are not being discussed, that are being neglected because it allows you, once you go into the details and get into the weeds of a lot of these policies, you may realize it's not necessarily what's best. It sounds good, and it may not always be what's best. So what I what I propose is not that we look at the Republican Party as a party who's just opposing everything. But I know I speak for myself and others that are, are that believe the way I believe. We just want a little more transparency as it relates to these topics and these policies that you're choosing or wanting to implement. Can I ask you something? Um, Congressman, you mentioned that Uh, and we have private insurance, which it's 
also uh, through the employer, most of it, 90% of it is through employers. But all these systems have the good and the bad. And in the universal health care, there's variations of that. And all those variations, so what's in Canada is different than what's in the UK, is different than what's in Australia, is different than the Swedes. Um, uh, so all of them have the, the, the drawbacks, and all of them have uh, the good in them. And I think when we're making a decision, uh, we sort of you know, look at what we have and say, OK, if the good topples the bad, or the bad topples the good, and then, you know, we make the decision based on that. But currently, our system does not work, as it should.
perspectives. My experience as, as a black man is not the same as either of these young ladies up here. Uh, and so therefore the perspective we take on certain political and social issues is different as well. And the issue within party is you're, you're told to take a position that you may not morally or ethically agree with, but because uh, it's what's best for me, quote unquote, you decide to do that. What in turn is really not what's best for you, it's best for those who are in the position of uh, making the transition or the changes that will occur in society. So it's been reassuring for me uh, to see uh, millennials and even Generation Xers who have said, I'm abandoning party, um, abandoning certain ideologies in order to figure out what can we bring about into the country that's going to bring about some type of transformative change. Um, I think in closing, the last part is that you're going to see what you already are seeing. More millennials are going to take local uh, as well as state offices. So they're running for these positions on school boards, on city councils, uh, for your state legislators, uh, your county commissioners, because you got to get in the door some way, somehow. And they're not picking a party. They're, they're literally giving you policy. They're giving you ideas which allow you to stretch beyond the box that you have traditionally voted in the last century and a half, especially as African American. Um, I would say that for me, I could never identify with either party. Uh, I have, I, I'm not completely liberal or completely conservative. I have a mix of both, depending on the issue. Um, and I really, 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 really dislike that's a lot of movies. Uh, <laughs> um, that crowd, crowd mob mentality, right? So if you are a Democrat, then you should agree on all these issues. Or if you are a Republican, then you should support all these issues. And I, you know, for different reasons, I feel like it goes against my inner self to do that. And for a long time, even when I was an undergrad, I just, I, even when I, when, I, when I had a lot of uh, conservative friends who were trying to convert me or try to pull me to the Republican Party, um, I felt them welcome. And uh, I felt that I could agree in many of their positions. And with Democrats, uh, I felt there was a lot of mob mentality. And with liberals, especially in my community, and they, they, there was a lot of liberals to Claxton for different reasons. Uh, it's sort of, I'm here to help you, but these are my views, and if you don't agree in all of my views, then you know what? Uh, I'm not going to help you. So, especially with the refugee communities, that happens a lot. Uh, there's a lot of people that come into our communities trying to feel better about themselves and about the choices that they made uh, or about the current political climate, right? So, Trump is in office, I feel bad, but I'm going to help some refugees uh, to feel better about myself. And this is not everybody, I'm not going to generalize, because there are some truly effective people that truly want to help for the sake of helping without having any um, uh, uh, undertone or, or reasons or agendas behind what they do. But um, that sort of me as, as, a, as a refugee, uh, as a black woman, I cannot identify with you. I agree with everything that Trump said, um, but I don't, I don't think that we are going to see a uh, distinction of the parties. I think there will always be a two-party system that is dominant because it's a business. But what I will say is that I do believe that um, we're going to see the uh, demographic shift. I, see there's, I think there's going to be a, um, just a mix-up in what we already thought, what we thought was um, the norm. Um, so I do believe there still will be remain a Republican Party, a Democratic Party, because I do think there are fundamental differences that are foundational differences that are there. Um, but I do think we're going to see a shift in demographics. So just moving forward. And if I may, one final question, and I would love it. a brief but um, <laughs> thorough answer. What are you? in your position and with your affiliations and with the titles that you now have and will probably have for the next two years, 
What are you doing? One thing at least that you're doing to make a difference in the election in the election process for 2020. We'll start with the As a, as a lawmaker, obviously, and what happened gone through the last election, there's a lot of information, misinformation, a lot of uh, people under the impression there's no transparency and the votes being done accurately. And a number of issues are being looked at. One is changing, well, my words are poems, not poems, changing the, the amount of time that you go without voting before you purge from the vote roll. That legislation has already been introduced. And there's a lot of interest in that across the board. parties all the functions in South, North South Georgia. The other thing is uh, the voting equipment. Um, federal Express can track a package around the world um, and have a document. And every time you go to the grocery store, you get a receipt to see what you bought. People are interested in having some type of paper trail to see who they voted for. That gives them some assurance and some confidence that their vote not only was accountable, but also who they voted for. So you're seeing now a big drive, including the governor's budget, to add more money to have local governments who, for, for the most part, they're the ones who purchase the voting I mean, machines. <coughs> local, but the state does put money in there. So those two things, you're seeing, you're seeing more of how to deal with the voting rolls and other uh, dealing with the new voting machines. Because it's, it's time, the technology is here, and it's a matter of time. Uh, that's so I'll be certainly engaged with my colleagues and Billy Mitchell and all the other members of the Georgia Bill Assembly. Uh, there are different views, because you have different vendors with different ideas, and everybody has an avenue so they can express this themselves and even the vote. So that's a big deal that's coming up.
I don't know about you, but um, in this day and age, I thoroughly enjoy the fact that all of you are having an impact, and you're speaking up, you're speaking out, you're standing up. And um, from uh, Representative Jones, when you made politics real for me in the cab, when you were elected, to listening to the young voices who are coming behind you, and you're still standing there screaming, and uh, being that drum major, I appreciate it. and you be the voice for me when I cannot be there and knowing and coming back to let us know what's coming down the channels. Uh, you epitomize what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said when he gave his drum major speech. Everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You can do something just in your neighborhood just in your church, just um, on your street, but it makes a difference. So you only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by that. And you can be a drum major. You are, and it makes me want to step up and step out of the bed. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you.